Good evening, class. Tonight we're going to uh, cover the uh, page 11 question sheet that uh, you were given the other night and um, see what the answers are. So if uh, you have your information there, if you take it out, let's see what, what we got. Okay, question number uh, 91. What is the minimum size soil pipe through the foundation wall? Okay, the answer is four inch. All right, and the page is 167. And that's section 10, that, uh, 15, paragraph 7B1. That's about two thirds of the way down the page. And it's right out there in the open. Here's what I'd suggest you do. The questions on this page in particular are very, very common test questions. And they have been since probably before my time. Uh, I would make a note of these, underline them, highlight them with yellow magic marker. If you don't have a yellow magic marker, get one. And um, make a note of them, okay? Um, so that in the future, uh, you can find them, for one thing, and you can also study them. Uh, all right, let's talk a little more about that. If you go through the wall of any building up to about the size of, we'll say, a medium commercial building, uh, it's going to be 4-inch. Four 4-inch four will handle a lot of fixture units. In fact, on page 169, they have how much it can handle. And on the uh, horizontal, it can go up to 160 uh, fixture units, which is a lot of bathrooms. Right, that would be roughly 15 bathrooms. Okay, so uh, most of your connections, and those of you who have been in the trade a while know this, it's almost always four inch. Now, let's say you're just doing a little, I don't even know if they have any more, but like a photo mat or a, a kiosk, something uh, like at a gas station where they have an attendant in a little, uh, little booth. Uh, they probably have a little half a bath in the back of that. Now, that little half bath also has to have a four inch line leaving the crawl space or out through the slab, okay? Um, there's no such thing as a three inch uh, drain through the wall. So that one there is, a f that's why we have the four inch. Okay, uh, and we've talked about sealing that pipe up, but just a quick review. If you're going out through the wall with PVC, I imagine most of you are sleeving it with six inch uh, PVC. I used to use sewer and drain pipe because it's cheaper and you can get like slice off maybe um, what seven or eight pieces. So it's sticking through the wall on both sides a little bit, not too much on the inside. And then you just water plug it in, put the donut over the four inch pipe, roll it into the, uh, into the sleeve after it dries and um, you're in. Okay. Now some guys will go the extra step and put like a friend on the outside. So it's pinching that six inch pipe, the sleeve and your four inch. All right. So you have that making it watertight plus the water plug on the inside. Very, very good idea because I've seen water plug, water plug fail. It happened to me. It happened once because I was deeper in the ground. This is my theory. I was about five feet down and usually deep uh, building. Um, it was going out to a septic tank. But for some reason, it was very deep in the ground, maybe five feet down. And I'm guessing it'd be the increase in the water pressure on the water plug because it was so deep, caused it to seep through. And I had to dig down and chip it out and do it over again. And it still leaked. And I ended up using a thing called Vulcan. It's like a, it's a seal for cracks in foundation walls and it worked very well, which I recommend. Okay, so let's move on from that. Uh, oh, one last thing. Uh, towards the end of my time doing new houses, a while ago, of course, uh, they came up with uh, a requirement where Instead of just the tar on the foundation wall, and they call that damp proofing, if you've never heard the name. Damp proofing means, um, they uh, I don't know if they spray that stuff on, I've never seen it done, or they just brush it on. I suspect they must spray it on some way. And it makes the foundation pretty watertight, okay? If they cover it correctly and thick enough, I guess it makes a pretty watertight seal between the foundation and the basement. Years before that, they didn't do that. It was just the concrete as you, I'm sure you all know. And then they came up with a requirement where they had to insulate either the inside foundation wall or the outside uh, for energy efficiency. 
And again, that came out again towards the end of my time. But I remember it being that two inch, um, very hard foam. And I remember what I would do is before I'd have to jackhammer the wall, I would get a spade shovel and I'd, you know, make it like a magic marker circle on it. And um, you got to get the elevation right. You can't screw up on this. If you go too high, not a big deal. You can always angle down when you get outside. But if you go too low coming out, you're stuck. So uh, once you, you know how high you want this, make a bigger hole, considerably bigger than what you're going to jackhammer. If you just make it the same size as your hole, you can't, when you put your jackhammer in, you can't twist it, right, to like shovel the pieces out. Uh, now, if you guys are lucky enough to have one of those core bits, good for you. I wish I had one. Uh, but if you're going to jackhammer, especially from the outside in, uh, keep that, cut that foam on a little bit bigger than what you need. You want to get fancy when you get done, you can cut pieces and stick it back on the wall. I won't worry too much about it. Okay, uh, moving on. Number 92. How many fixture units in a three-piece bath with a tank-type water closet? This one here, I would, I, I used to have a lot of trouble finding this. And if you look on page 168, you'll see why. It's only listed in this chart itself. You know, when would you be looking on a chart to find out a statement, you know, a description? But it's here it is. It's a bathroom group. Okay. Um, and they call it a, uh, a bathroom group. And it adds up to seven. And if you do the math, you got two for the tub or shower, either or, it doesn't matter. You got um, one for the lav and four for the water closet. Okay, it comes up to seven, no matter how you add it up. And yet they say, because it's a bathroom group, we're going to give you a bonus. It's kind of like when you buy something in bulk, they get a lesser price. Uh, why it's six instead of seven, I have no idea. But they do give you a break on that. Maybe because they figure you're not going to flush everything or turn everything on at the same time. I'm guessing that's what it is. But when you hear the term bathroom group, do this. Do yourself a favor. Highlight this. Write it down somewhere. Because I don't recall seeing this anywhere else in the book. If it's in the book and you found it, good for you. But this is the only place I know that it is. And what it means is basically exactly what I just said. Toilet, sink, tub or shower adds up to seven. Because they call it a bathroom group, it's six. Okay, so the answer there is six. Okay, question 93. Um, it's really the same question, a little almost the same. Same bathroom, but with a, a flush water uh, water closet. Okay, now, a flushometer water closet has a fixture unit value of six rather than the four for the um, tank type. All right? This is not the water coming in. This is the water going out. So you get four units going out on a tank type and six on a flushometer. So what it does is it kicks up the bathroom group total to eight. Again, you add them up, it comes up to nine. But because it's... Uh, the three together and they call it a group um it adds up to eight okay so the answer for 92 was six the answer for 93 is eight and uh if you look on uh, page 168 up at the top it describes the uh, uh the bathroom groups okay now talking about repetition um let's talk about it again <laughs> question 94 how many fixture units on a tank type water closet? All right, we just talked about that. Tank type, all right, where you just have gravity. You flush the lever and the water goes down by gravity. Okay, the answer is uh, four. How many fixture units on a flushometer type water closet? That's number 95, and the answer is six. Now, if you look on page 168, follow that list of fixture units down to um, toilet tank about three quarters of the way down what i did is i highlighted and for me i don't know if you want to do it in your book but uh this is what i use the book for i'm not out in the field with it uh so i put 94 for question for tank type and 95 for uh valve operated toilet uh, valve operated okay for six okay uh it's a little repetition but don't forget it but the main thing is even if you got to put a note at the top of the page bathroom group all right, here it is. That's what it's about. 
And again, like I said, these are questions, especially this page in particular, these are not up some obscure things that you're never going to see on a test or out in the real world. You may not see all this stuff out in the, out in the world. Oh, you do, actually. But you don't have to worry about it so much, the, like the bathroom group. Okay. At this point, I would like to ask if there's any questions. Okay. Guess not, huh? All right. But seriously, that reminds me. It brings up another th thing. Um, now, I know that most nights I'll ask you if you got any question on the videos that you would see in the class before. And it's rare if I get a, anybody with a question or a comment. And I can't believe that everybody understands everything and doesn't have a question or at least a comment or maybe a new way to do things. Um, something in the book that I'm talking about is a little dated and you come up with something new. Um, for example, the flexible lab supplies that were really new when I was a kid coming into the trade back in the 60s early 70s, 60s, actually, they, I think they came out around 1960. Uh, now you got the braided ones, which is so much easier. And I have to admit, they're a lot better. I just changed my uh, kitchen sink faucet in the last month or so. And uh, of course, the braided ones were the best. Just make that extra loop to adjust the length of it. Couldn't be easier. Uh, but seriously, if you got a question, a couple of ways we can do it. If you got a question, chances are somebody else might have the same question ask you know while we're on we're all on uh online and if you want if you especially if it's going to be something that you think is going to be kind of detailed and go on a bit if you want to just wait until everybody starts going off i'll see that you're still there right because i don't go you know i don't close down until everybody's gone and if everybody hasn't signed in i usually wait around until after 6 30. so if you want to go one-on-one -on -one with a question go right ahead now i know how it works been a while since I was in school. In fact, when uh, I was in ninth grade, Eisenhower was still president, which was what, 60 years ago, something like that. Uh, but I remember clearly, nobody asked questions. Everything finishes up sooner, I understand. But sometimes the questions are worth it. So please, if you got any comments or questions or recommendations, uh, by all means, put it out there. And again, you want to go one-on-one? -on -one? Just wait until everybody else is signed off. Okay. Um, let's get back to the, the question sheet. Let's see. Number 97. Oh, excuse me. Number 96. Uh, how many water closets or bathroom groups are allowed on a three-inch branch? Okay, now one thing to remember, and uh, unless you guys are kind of senior apprentices and doing this stuff on your own, on new work, which technically you're not supposed to, um, remember, the, re the thing you're really looking at is how many water closets are there. You would have to do like five to six bathrooms on a three-inch line before the total fixture units would exceed what a, a three-inch line can handle. It's the bathroom, the toilets or the bathrooms they're in, they make the difference. So instead of five or six bathrooms, because of the toilets, we can never put more than three on a three-inch line. And I think most of you know that. Okay, so let's see what this question sheet looks like here. How many water closets or bathroom groups are allowed on a three-inch branch? Okay, now, they're worth the highlight here, and I suggest you do this. Circle it. It's the word branch. Okay, the branch is like a branch of a tree. That's one branch coming off the main stack in this case, all right? Branch means something you can cut off and the main, you know, the main system is still there. So this would be a branch or the same floor as another way to write it. In fact, you could write that down parentheses there, just put down there, same floor. Okay, so what do we look for? All right, we look on page 169 and read those notes underneath the chart at the top. First of all, the branch. Read uh, where it says, go down to where it says notes. No more than two toilets or bathroom groups on the same horizontal fixture branch. There it is. Myself, I would highlight that. That is huge. Okay. No inspector will let you slide on this one, right? 
if you're working on a job where somebody slid something in, um, to be grandfathered, by the way, be, understand this, just because something's been there existing for, we'll say 20 years, if it was legal when it went in, we'll say 50 years, 60 years, um, three handled shower valve, we're familiar with those, or three handled tub valve, shower valve would be two. The third one is always the bypass, the uh, shower or tub selector. So those are okay. Just don't replace it. You can repair it, but if you take it out and you think you're going to put it somewhere else, forget it. Okay. It's uh, antique now. It's a museum piece, but that was legal in its day. So you can keep it and you can repair it. If you run across a situation where somebody slid in a house, that's maybe we'll say, uh, I saw this when I was an inspector, maybe say 30 years ago when I was an inspector, um, I came across a house that had a, it was a national company like Moen. No, it might have been Delta. It was a one handle shower valve. And I, you know, I looked at it. Okay. Then something didn't look right. This was on the rough now. And uh, I looked closer at the cylinder and the cylinder on uh, pressure balance uh, or thermostatically controlled, they're all about the same. They're what, about two inches in diameter, something like that. This one had a cylinder. It was like maybe the size of a three quarter inch uh, black steel pipe or like one inch copper. It was like really small. And I knew right away what it meant. This valve came from a state that doesn't have mass or Rhode Island required. This wasn't Rhode Island, but it was the same requirement. Somehow it slipped into a Rhode Island and somebody installed it, not realizing what they installed. And I had to inform him, this isn't, this isn't code. This has got to come out. Now, what if I said, yeah, okay, let it go. But next time, don't use this one. And there was a malfunction. This happened. My father saw this happen. Uh, the source of hot water malfunction. Good example. You got a tankless on a water heater. Cuts the water from 180, 200 boiler water temperature down to 130, right? Uh, actually, excuse me, 112 if it's a shower. Something goes wrong somebody bypasses it right to get hotter water all of a sudden grandma takes a shower and this happened it was a grandma that got she was in her 90s and she collapsed and got burned badly it was a, a very major lawsuit case somebody backtracks this house was built at such and such a time who did the work who was the inspector okay i don't really care about you it's your insurance if you're uh, like joe smith the plumbing contractor you only got so much insurance right? Hopefully you got some insurance. But if you are working for the city or the town, 30 years ago, they had million dollar policy on me as a town employee, as a lawyer, that's what I'm going after. I don't care about who, who, who's at fault. I'm looking for the money, right? And not only would the town be out a ton of money, uh, somebody got hurt unnecessarily. And you, ever, you know, you're in trouble, probably lost your job. And obviously it could end up in the paper. So don't, uh, Take it from somebody who's been an inspector, especially if you know the guy. Don't let stuff go. I mean, I didn't let this go, by the way. That case with the valve, I um, I made him change it. All right? I was always fair. That's how I used to play. I always played fair. Uh, I try to be flexible. House burned down. You know, somebody needs a little extra time. You know, you bend the rules as much as you can without breaking them. But if somebody really tries to give you a hard time, then... Uh, for those of you who end up being an inspector, and I'm sure some of you will, um, then you play hard, okay? If they're trying to make a fool of you or roll over you, no way, no way. Uh, go after them and be sure before you do, get the blessing of your of your boss, which would be a town council, city council, uh, the corporation council, the lawyer for the city of town, uh, solicitor in Little Compton, and then go for it, okay? That's how it, I think it should work. Okay, moving on. Um, how many? Uh, okay, they ask us two things. One is 96 is how many water closets are allowed on a three inch branch. That was note number three on page 169. Note number four is number 97. How many water closets or bathroom groups are allowed on a building drain? Okay, the building drain is the one at the top where it says horizontal drain, right? That's a building drain. 
Okay, so if you've got a, a building drain, um, you can only use three water closets on the whole thing. Okay, you can't do three on the same floor. We just did that, two on one floor. But if it's a building drain, you can have a stack coming off that, and one on each floor, or two on one floor, one on another, but the total can only be three. All right, that was note number four. Okay, next question. How many water closets or bathroom groups are allowed on a three inch stack? Okay, as soon as you hear the word stack, move down to the table number three. That's the small chart at the bottom of page 169. You guys gotta get very familiar with these two charts. Now, on a test, what they would do is provide you with these charts, right? I don't know about the notes, because that would give away some answers, but they definitely will give you the charts. You are not expected to memorize charts. The math on those formula sheets that uh, you got earlier in the season, yes. Unfortunately, uh, the last time I checked, which was last school year, um, they were still using that stuff. Some of it is uh, only good for classroom academic purposes. Uh, we're not going to be designing tanks and all the rest of it, but they want you to know how to do it. Uh, so if you hear horizontal, building drain, and so on, use the chart at the top. And the chart at the bottom says, I put, I want to say it says vertical. No, it doesn't. On mine, it says vertical because I printed it in and I circled it with red ink a couple of years ago. Right? This is big. And I also highlight the word stack on in uh, that, that, that heading there. Okay? That's vertical. Now, look carefully at this. And I also highlighted everything up to three-inch pipe or four-inch pipe, actually. Notice that three inch diameter building drain at the top of the page can handle 34 fixture units, which if you remember, six is a typical bathroom. Five times six is 30. So that would be five bathrooms, right? With four left over for maybe a kitchen sink. Doesn't work like that. Um, you can only do three toilets. Now you drop down to the stack and you think, oh, this is gonna be different. It is, the total is different. It goes up to 48 because everything is free falling, right? It's not going horizontally, it's just dropping straight. So they say 48. However, it's got two little asterisks there. Instead of like the up the top, it's got three dash four next to 34. This one has two little stars. Okay, go down to the uh, the note. It's a reference for a note, a single note. And this is the answer for number 98. 98 was how many water closets on a three inch stack? Answer is three, okay? There is no exception to three. Okay. Um, number 99. How many water closets are allowed on each branch interval of a three inch stack? And uh, 99 is two. It doesn't change on the uh, horizontal or the vertical, which is the stack. Two is two. That's it. Okay. So the, and here's my advice to you, uh, and this is just me talking. If they ask you a question that you have to answer off the chart, for example, here's a question for you, for your license. On a five-inch stack, how many fixture units can be um, handled by a five-inch stack? The answer I'm looking right at is 540, okay? And by the way, as soon as you get to four inches, no more exception on those water closets. Right, you can have like 50 water closets as long as it's less than this total in the right hand column on both horizontal and vertical. Okay, so the answer would be 540. All right, if under a uh, five inch pipe at quarter inch to the foot, you notice the different numbers, um, the steeper the pitch, the more fixed units they give you. But at quarter inch to the foot, center column on the upper part, horizontal, it's 480. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, under four inch, it's 216. Under uh, four inch um, horizontal is 216, four inch vertical is 240. So the vertical is always higher than the horizontal. My advice is we don't usually work with um, anything beyond four inch. In fact, a lot of the book you've probably noticed, their references are always four inch or less, right? Anything bigger than four inch is a big building. And I could tell you from experience, you guys, all, most of you guys know this. You get something that needs bigger than a four inch uh, building drain. 
you're going to have a, a very, very tight set of specs. You're not going to have to use your imagination on anything. You better follow directions. You better follow that print to the letter because when your boss checks it or the uh, clerk of the works, whoever's running the job and the inspector too, he'll be looking only, but remember now the inspector is looking for code. So if your prints say you use a, what Joe, Joe Sam floor drain or something like that, and you use another brand, the inspector could care less. But the clerk of the works, he sees what you're supposed to put in. You put in something lesser. Well, you're going to have a problem. Okay. You might end up taking it out or not getting paid. So uh, don't worry too much about doing design work beyond the residential, very light commercial level. Right? You don't have to worry about that because there will be, uh, there will be specs on all that stuff. You're not getting paid or your boss is not getting paid enough to be a designer. Okay, um, I think that is about it. And uh, let me see, we got the time. Now we got a couple minutes left. All right, one thing I would like, let me see. Yeah, a couple of things I'd like to go over with you while I got a few minutes to use up here. Now the last class, one of the last classes I did was business and I got carried away with some of my stories. And I remember the high school kids used to love some of those stories about when I was told to go to uh, Federal Hill in Providence. It was a true story. I mean, I don't, I don't make this stuff up. Um, it was a long time ago, and I never went to Providence. But with all joking, is I think this video got cut off kind of uh, a little bit earlier than I would have liked. But in all seriousness, uh, don't don't get involved in that stuff. Um, don't threaten. Don't imply threats. Don't act like a mob boss right? Uh, it makes for funny stories and you might get your money. But um, one of my customers was connected to the mob. His father was like a some slot machine um, underground character. And uh, I don't know, I'm sure that if he wasn't a mobster himself, I'm sure he had friends that were. Um, so even if it's somebody where, you know, that you can physically threaten to get your money, uh, you know, bad things could happen to you. So don't go that route. Uh, your best bet is to, um, when you meet a person and you go to talk to them about a job you're going to do, like I said, I met somebody once who got burned and he went the other way. I mean, because he was so laid back on his business policies, he lost a ton of money. Um, he would charge people just to look at a job and then tell them if I get the job, I'll deduct this off the, uh, the price of the job. And he wanted to get paid when he, uh, as he finished the job, right? I don't think he got it all up front. Maybe he'd get some up front, but he actually charged to go and give a price on a job. Okay. Never did that. I don't know anybody else that did that. Uh, but be a little bit up front. be more upfront about it. Even though talking money to some of us and myself included is difficult. Don't avoid it. Right? Really? That's what you're there for. Yeah, maybe you young guys can get a little bit of practice in there, but for the most part, you're not there for your health or to learn the trade. You're there to make a buck. And also, I told you about how much you charge. Again, your business, but uh, find out what the going rate is. And uh, if you know somebody that guys that are very active out in the out in the moonlight business, you can check with them. And uh, I would suggest try to go for about half of what what they get on the outside, which these days, I guess is a hundred and a quarter. I have no idea by the hour, but think about it. Don't, don't do this 15 to 20 bucks an hour stuff. That's nuts. Um, because your name is on this job. And also I'm going to repeat it. This will be the last time I promise you got no insurance, right? So, which means you got no recourse. Are uh, you really in an awkward spot about declaring this money for taxes? Because, um, this is money that you made doing something illegal. I don't know that the uh, internal revenue is going to be on your case, but I, I don't know. Who knows? And another one is a thing that happened 30, 40 years ago. Um, the internal revenue, I didn't, I'm getting, giving this to you like third hand, but it did happen. Came down, internal revenue paid a call to this area. I guess a lot of guys were uh, under reporting what they were earning and the internal revenue is not stupid. What they did is they went to the town halls and pulled up the, the permits for the plumbing, especially like new houses and, uh, saw who they were and, uh, 
I guess that caused a, a little bit of hot burn for some people that were, were cheating on that. They're doing a lot of cash work. So personally, I never did much cash work. I found it more trouble than it was worth. Uh, I don't think I did 1% cash. Uh, you want to do cash, be careful. All right. If you leave a, a trail, uh, if you do cash, you don't get a permit. You don't get a permit and the place catches fire. We'll say the appliance malfunctions, but they blame you. What's your, what's your comeback? You got no insurance. Your insurance company is not going to cover you if you did something that was technically against the law. So be careful. Okay. Um, I think we're coming up. Yeah, we're just about out of time. So um, I'm going to wrap this up on page 11. And uh, I will actually be talking to you before you see this video. But uh, stick around in the future. If there's something that I put out that's wrong in particular, then I, I really would encourage you to say something in front of everybody. I mean, I'd rather you tell me I'm wrong and we straighten it out than put out something that's obsolete or just false. That's the worst thing that could, uh, could happen. Okay. And uh, also, um, business question. I mean, I wasn't a big business tycoon, but uh, some of the practical down earth things you got to do. I was pretty good at that. I mean, you have to be to go into business. So if you got any questions, you can ask. Okay, um, I'm going to shut this one off and pick it up with uh, a chapter out of the uh, 